Cornishter. Can I ask, Thanks, first of all, we've got uh, two candidates for the Tory leadership. Um, they both say that the backstop has to be binned completely. What is your message to them? Well, my, my message is very clear that um, while uh, we accept that there's been a very competitive leadership contest in the Conservative Party, uh, we want to hear what they have to say when they're number 10, whichever one wins that race. Uh, and when we have a new British Prime Minister on, on Wednesday, uh, Ireland will obviously want to talk to that person. Uh, we will be reasonable, I think, as we always are. But I think it's important to say very clearly, uh, if respectfully, uh, that the facts don't change around Brexit. The complexity doesn't change. The vulnerabilities on the island of Ireland don't change. Uh, and just because there's a change in personality uh, as British Prime Minister doesn't mean that the negotiation of the last three years uh, and the solutions that were designed by the British government as yes. much as by the EU uh, aren't still as relevant and as important today uh, as they were six or eight weeks ago. Does that mean that a new British Prime Minister who comes to the EU and to Ireland and says the backstop is dead, we want to tear up the withdrawal agreement, in those circumstances there's barely any point in talking? Is the negotiation well, I think, I mean, I think if the approach of the new British Prime Minister is that they, they're they going to tear up the withdrawal agreement, uh, then I think we're in trouble. Um, I think we're all in trouble, quite frankly, because uh, that's a little bit like saying, either give me what, what I want or I'm going to burn the house down for everybody. Um, the EU, I think, has made it very clear uh, that we want to engage with the new British Prime Minister. We want to avoid a no-deal Brexit. Um, but the, the solutions that have been put in place uh, to do that um, uh, haven't changed. Uh, uh, and just because uh, well, a, a new British Prime Minister says they have to change uh, doesn't mean that the EU collectively will respond to that by changing the approach of the last three years. I think there will be a fundamental unfairness also uh, in offering an entirely different deal to a new British Prime Minister that, uh, than uh, the one that was negotiated with the previous Prime Minister in good faith. Um, the, which involved the, compromise on all sides. Sure, but there's an indication on the front page of the Sunday Times that yourself and others have been talking to the Boris Johnson campaign and don't let the others, and that there is some possible alternative way forward, some area for compromise. Is that true, and what is it? Well, I mean, I, I think if you listen to, to the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, this week, I think she's also focusing on the kind of things that, that we would like to focus on, and, and I know Michel Barnier would also like to focus on, and I was with him this week for, uh, for a couple of hours, um, you know, if, if a new British Prime Minister decides they want to change the future relationship ambition uh, between the UK and the EU, uh, then certainly uh, we hope that the backstop that many in the UK don't seem to like can be, can be avoided. But, but the idea that we can do jump away... In. If that's the case, to avoid the backstop, Britain would have to agree to be inside the customs union and the single market and the same VAT regime and so forth which for an awful lot of people would not be leaving and would be impossible to get through the British House of Commons. So which, is why the, which is why the backstop is so important. Which is uh, also a non-starter because it's not going to get through the back House of Commons under well, any circumstance. Well, I mean, um, that's a matter for, for the British government and the House of Commons uh, with respect. So, so that's not is, a matter for the okay. Irish government. I mean, what I my job, that. No, but just to be clear, my job has always been uh, to respect the decision of the British people, but to try to protect Irish interests on the island of Ireland uh, and to try to ensure that those involved in these negotiations understand the vulnerabilities and complexities and the responsibilities that the British and Irish governments have to people in Northern Ireland and on the island as a whole. And the idea uh, that we can consider uh, moving away from something that took two and a half years to negotiate, given all of that complexity and compromises on both sides to try and accommodate British red lines, don't forget, not EU uh, red lines, can I ask uh, you about, we're simply not going to move away from that withdrawal agreement. Let me ask you about some of the compromise areas that have been talked about in the past. Is there any possibility, for instance, of a time limit to the backstop? More or less yes or no? Well, I mean, we've always said no to that because unless you can answer so, the question, okay. no, just because it, there's a context around this. You have to be able to answer the question if asked, well, what happens at the end of that time limit? Uh, uh, and if you can't answer okay. that question, then it's not a backstop at all. Same question about a so-called unilateral escape hatch or one-sided escape hatch for the British. Well, I mean, look, the, the, uh, if you want to call it a, an escape hatch, I think that's a mode of language because nobody's trapping anybody anywhere. Um, what, what, what we're saying here is that the backstop is an insurance fallback mechanism 
if politics is unable to negotiate a way forward, then then that is the default position. But we have always said, and by the way, the Strasbourg Agreement, which Theresa May negotiated, uh, puts a legal obligation on everybody uh, to to look at seriously alternative arrangements to the backstop should it come to that. There are review mechanisms in the withdrawal agreement that facilitates that, and everybody wants to move ahead on the basis of avoiding the use of the backstop. But it does need to be there as a default position if all else fails. And that is the yeah. commitment that the so, British government, including a government that both Boris Johnson and Jeremy sure. Hunt were part of, have given a commitment on on multiple occasions, both I, in I Northern Ireland well. and elsewhere. I remember it well. One other area, a lot of people are talking about a standstill free trade agreement, GATT 24 agreement, whatever you call it. What's the Irish government's approach to that? Well, I mean, look, we, we just don't think that's a viable option at all. And, uh, and by the way, you know, it's not just the Irish government. Uh, I think the Brexit committee in the House of Commons has also made it very clear that that's not that's that's a non-starter. So this is where we are now. Uh, there are no available compromises or fudges to to the backstop agreement. The backstop agreement is not going to get through the House of Commons. It follows ineluctably, as W. B. Yeats might have put it, that we're heading towards no deal. Well, I mean, I certainly hope not, uh, because the the backstop can be avoided by negotiation. Uh, the backstop can be replaced with alternative arrangements. But the backstop does need to be part of a withdrawal agreement so so yeah. that we can... But, I mean, and a lot of people don't focus on this in the debate in the UK. This is about reassuring people in Northern Ireland that they are not going to go back to the friction and tensions of the past. Okay. That is ultimately that. what this is about. And so to ask Ireland to compromise on that core issue when we spent two and a half years working with the British government and the EU to try and find a way to compromise on all sides to ensure that we okay. don't face that but prospect. Uh, it is not a reasonable ask because uh, of a you know, political challenge in. in Westminster I to am, move away from that position. I do understand that. But why is it better to keep the backstop without a time limit and have the prospect of um, a possible problem on the border in five years or ten years' time rather than face problems on the border on October the 31st, which is where we are now? Because that is what negotiation is about, Andrew, with respect. We spent years, two and a half of them, uh, negotiating sorry, this position. It's, we not are where we are. it's not history. 27 governments, in fact 28, including the British government, have all signed up to that approach. All of us have. Um, what hasn't happened is a ratification in the House of Commons. So the EU is united on this issue, is not going to change on this issue. What we do want to do, though, is work with a new British Prime Minister to look at ways of providing reassurance and potentially different approaches in relation to the, the approach to the future relationship between the EU and the UK to avoid I, the use of the backstop. I and, just don't understand what be, those might be. And, just, to be. and to be serious about looking at alternative arrangements that can work. But the truth as, is, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, but the, the truth is, so far, the alternative arrangements that have uh, essentially been proposed effectively mean a border on the island of Ireland away from the physical border. Um, but those, that approach, in my view, would fundamentally disrupt the all-island economy, which has been a reinforcer of peace for but two you, decades. You, you may well have to do it. What about a long transition period, as long as it takes to get a, a, a better deal? and avoid a hard border in October. Look, I mean, I don't think it would be uh, either sensible or, uh, 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 or clever politically to start talking about individual uh, approaches now on air. There is, a, there, is a, there is a conversation to be had between the new British Prime Minister and his team. We look forward to, to having that conversation. Yeah. Uh, I think the team in Brussels are also looking forward to that conversation. Certainly, Michel Barnier's mm. approach on this is he wants to try to solve this in a way that makes sense for everybody. Everybody loses I, in a no-deal Brexit. I can hear lots of, lots of warm and friendly words. What I can't see is any plausible alternative route ahead, as far as you're concerned, the British government's concerned, except for no deal. Can I just turn to what no deal would mean for Ireland? Because you yeah. presented a paper, I think, to the Irish Cabinet, and it suggested, for instance, that there'd be a six and a half billion euro hit to the public finances. Unemployment in Ireland would rise by up to 55,000 jobs and growth would be hit to the tune of 3%. That's a really serious hit to the Irish economy, and that is what is facing you in November. Believe me, we understand only too well what the consequence for Ireland's society is of a no-deal Brexit. We also understand only too well the consequences for Northern Ireland 
Uh, and if you looked at a recent report from civil servants in Nor Northern Ireland, they're talking about at least 40,000 jobs Indeed. being lost Indeed. in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland exports 30% of its exports to the Republic of Ireland. Uh, every year, close to 800,000 deliveries come from the north to south, uh, <laughs> to the south, in terms yeah. of, of business transactions. So everybody loses in a no-deal Brexit scenario, and which yet, is why... And which yet is why it's where we are now. It's where we are heading. Well, sorry, it is not where we are now. It is, you know, because the House no, of Commons no, won't pass a withdrawal no, sorry. agreement. And sorry, you, you sorry. On. If the House of Commons chooses to facilitate a no-deal Brexit, and if a new British Prime Minister chooses to take Britain in that direction, then it will happen. But this will be a British choice. Not an Irish choice, not an but, EU choice. This is a British choice. We all want to avoid a no-deal Brexit, and we have worked for three years to try to do that. I have done very little else in politics, apart from focus on the choice of the British people to leave the European Union and its impact on Ireland and the EU. We want to try to resolve these issues, but we won't do it on the basis of being told what must happen, because that is the only thing that can pass in the House of Commons. Any yeah. negotiation, international negotiation, needs to involve compromise on both sides. I absolutely We have a deal that, that has that. involved compromise on both sides to facilitate, let's not forget, British red lines throughout this process. And a new British Prime Minister doesn't change that. If no deal happens at the end of October, who carries out the checks on the island of Ireland? The British government said it's certainly not going to be us. Oh, well, I mean, if we, if we face the prospect of a no-deal Brexit, uh, Ireland will have to protect, uh, when I say Ireland, I mean the Republic of Ireland, will have to protect our place in the EU single market. Otherwise, Britain's sure. decision to leave without a deal will drag the Republic Sucked of Ireland out of well. the single market sure. as well. We cannot that. allow that. Our whole business model is based on free and open trade and borderless trade, quite frankly. Uh, and so we've made it very clear to our, um, uh, to our colleagues across the European Union there would need to be mechanisms that protect the integrity of the EU single market and in the Republic of Ireland. In other when words, when you say mechanisms, you mean facilities, you mean places where lawyers are words, going to queue up and be What checked. I mean is uh, we cannot allow uh, an open back door into the EU single market through Northern Ireland. If we do, well, then the Republic of Ireland will be taken out of the single market as well, and I can't allow that. So and, you and have won't. to carry out these checks, don't you? So we will, we will have to reassure, and we're working with the Commission on this. There's a, there's a dual responsibility here, and the Commission recognises both. Uh, we have to protect have to relationships it. and peace on the island of Ireland, and we're not going to create a security risk by putting border checks in place on the border, but we also have to make sure uh, that there are uh, verification mechanisms to ensure that the EU knows what is coming in to its single market. And Which that would be a big only challenge. One for possibility. Can I ask very, very clearly, are you as the Irish government going to carry out checks beyond the border or not? Well, we've said very clearly that there will need to be checks somewhere. Uh, and, and we are with the Irish government in Ireland. We are we are working out with the European Commission how that would work. Uh, because we have to but because but if it's not in Ireland, it can be in France or, no, or Holland. No, you couldn't accept no, it can't either. be. No, it can't so be. It has because, to be in Ireland. Sorry, if if it is in France or Holland or Belgium, it means that Ireland is being taken out of the single market and customs union. So it we has cannot, to be in Ireland. It has to be in Ireland, which is so, why so we... So the Irish government will carry out checks in Ireland in the event of a no-deal Brexit. We have always made it very clear. If the British government forces a no-deal Brexit on everybody else, the Republic of Ireland will have no choice but to protect its own place in the EU single market. And that will fundamentally disrupt the all-island economy which we are trying to protect, and a British government repeatedly has promised that they would help us protect in order to recognise that an all-island economy is a reinforcer of peace and normality on the island of Ireland. But, but that will not be possible to protect in the context of a no-deal Brexit. We understand that, and we have a contingency plan in design with the European Commission to try to do the best okay. we can to protect a peace process while at the same time protecting the integrity of the EU single market. Both of those objectives will be needed, but believe me, they won't be easy. And this is part of the, of the complexity, uh, both for Britain okay. and Ireland, uh, of the consequences of a no-deal Brexit, which is very, very bad news for everybody.